relations with that nation in and of itself, but that gets into a bigger political political spectrum. There's this scene in the, when you went to the um, the South Country Fair, and um, to what extent do you think that whole alternative, I don't know what is it, um, fair, will be linked to Aboriginal cultural practices? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, are you talking Aboriginal Canadian? Yes. Or are you talking Indigenous? Canadian. All right. Canadian. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know how much it would be linked get within the film. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think it will be linked. There's these na na natural relationship visually and obviously culturally through yeah. dancing. Yes. And that, that shows a great linkage between those uh, within the film. Uh, overall, the linkage between it is a general linkage again between the uh, cultural celebration through dance and I think that's you know I don't think that Canadians learn to dance from Aboriginals at all you know no. and especially within something like the South Country Fair you know I think that idea ideally comes back from more European fair and uh, folk festivals and the idea of folk uh, of music and, mm -hmm. and that sort of uh, North American culture in and of itself but ultimately it all does tie into the nature of celebration. I think that is a human thing across this whole world and the need to celebrate and dance and music I find is fairly common amongst many cultures. Mm -hmm. um. Some of us are just better dancers. Like the Aboriginal is pretty, well even within what you see at the powwow, that's many different dance forms. Some modern like fancy dance and some old like the prairie dance or the chicken, uh, prairie chicken dance. Anyways, so um, so, so those have diversity within dance and dance styles, and some would even say appropriation if you looked at it in another way. Um, within within the South Country Fair, that's your that's your melting pot, pot to me, and you know it's like by a lot of con conservative, and I do mean big C, are a little put off by that sort of sort of you know they laugh at it, sort of the Hank Hill sort of uh, you know Hank Hill. Yes, no. Hank. Yeah, that's sort of the Hank Hill walks up to that and just shakes his head like oh. You know, they move in the neighborhood, he's got to get rid of these people, and they're doing no harm, but they're, uh, they're quite a lot because they tend to, you know, that's the cultural freedom, sort of, I can do whatever I want. It's where you see some of the most amazing and also the scariest dances in the whole world, I find. Oh. People who, in my conservative nature, I'm pretty conservative, I really wish they would sit down. That's okay. That's why I go to specials, because everyone can dance and everyone can laugh. So I can laugh. <laughs> Um, how do you pick your soundtrack, your soundtrack? Uh, well, the movie's composed. It's, com it's composed? Yeah, all the music other, well, uh, yeah, actually all the music's composed other than one song, which, you know, is uh, by Res Official, mm -hmm. uh, and it plays during the, uh, there's a sequence where there's dancing between a guy, hip-hop sort of dancing, mm -hmm. uh, at a gas station, and it's cut to powwow dancing, and it's a uh, First Nations hip-hop group called Res Official from Alberta, and it's a great song. But the rest of it's composed by uh, composers I've worked with before, and then also by uh, Lance Tailfeathers and Trevor Kitoki compared uh, to Blackfoot uh, musicians, composed some of the other music that occurs more in the Rocket sequences and the end song. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we had a whole other score, but ACDC costs a lot of money. Actually, every other piece of music we had costs a lot of money, so we scored it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very expensive. <laughs> yes. How would you define the genre of your film? It's interesting because it's clearly, I guess, it's within documentary, but it's such a broad, broad word, especially since Survivor's documentary now. Mm -hmm. um, which is possibly the best documentary ever made. Survivor? Yeah. It's really good. Um, Johnny Fairplay. Um, I don't know, I guess some people would call it, you know, I, I have a more artistic, artistic approach to filmmaking. Mm -hmm. It's the constant visual uh, collage. And some people call it very experimental documentary. I'm not sh sure, G generally when I think of experimental, I run into a lot of experimental visualizations, and I really enjoy it. And, 
I think uh, it's more experimental in its conversation style, uh, but it's not really. It's really a throwback film. If you want to look at it within the documentary genre, it goes back to less consolidation or opinionation by the filmmaker, and that's all it is. It's people are like it's refreshing. Like, well, this is what it used to be before video and journalists took over documentary filmmaking and put themselves in it and took shots of themselves, cutaways of themselves, had voiceover themselves. Like the film could have been me traveling in a car with shots of me and my voiceover going, oh my God, I couldn't believe this interview. I don't know where this next place is going to take me to. Cut to the interview, cut to me being offended or happy of what I heard, yeah. blah, blah. And I think that's where some people get into like it's different than what we've seen and stuff. And really it's a throwback to like uh, documentary uh, 30 years prior, really, mm. and documentary prior to the takeover by journalists. But that's a different discussion, I'm sure, that <laughs> somebody in the film program is doing I'm that sure sort of that. master's degree <laughs> on that. Probably. And, but how do you think this kind of approach that you've given it uh, helps you to you know, reveal and kind of unveil what's happening with regarding racial relations? Sure. In, uh, in Alberta specifically. <laughs> in Alberta. Well, I don't know about in, in Alberta specifically. Well, I think Canada. the film is about Alberta, but I always try to get across that it's just a sample I chose. Mm -hmm. um, it's about Canada. Like the film is about Canada expressly to me. It's about racism. But it's about ca Canadian brand racism. Um, the approach for this film was specific to just letting people talk because I think this conversation, uh, theoretically to me, at the time I'm making this has been covered. There is a lot of documentaries on what has occurred to First Nations. There's a lot of TV documentaries. There's constant journalist pieces, but none of them, they're all very pointed and directed and pointed. Direct. So people don't care anymore. They turn it off. They don't watch. They're already writing their opinion based on the title of an article. They're not listening anymore because they've seen these model documentaries about what they should think. And so this film had uh, we decided it was just we had to let people speak and yes we do have a few academics um, but we really just wanted to talk to other people about this because at some point this conversation I think has been removed from the general Canadian populace and they've all they've been given is these products of media that tell them now what they're supposed to think based on multiculturalism policy and white papers and all these sort of things that occurred without giving them a chance to uh, be educated through the process of why we're trying 